Hey guys, Andy here, and welcome to a brand new episode of Q and Andy Japandy, where I answer your questions about life in Japan. And it's certainly been a while since I've done one of these, and we have a lot to go over, but only 10 questions for today. So, with that said, let's get into it. So, question number one How was I treated as an American studying abroad in Tokyo? So, during my time studying abroad in Tokyo, I was only one of a handful of foreign students at my university, Lakeland University of Japan. And of the foreign contingent of students, I was probably one of like four or five Americans <laughs> studying there. And so I was definitely very unique among my friend group. And a lot of people wanted to talk to me. And then a certain something happened in the air during my time. And we had to go study in Zoom rooms. And it wasn't until near the end of my time where I was actually able to socialize with my classmates in person again. So while we did talk a lot online with each other, I just felt like the friendship could have been a bit better, <laughs> but due to the circumstances, it just kind of was what it was. But everybody was super friendly with me and were very interested in America and American life and stuff like that. So yeah, no complaints. Question number two. Do I plan on getting my own apartment in Tokyo? Hell no, <laughs> unless I absolutely positively have to live in Tokyo. I'm not planning on moving to Tokyo anytime soon. Uh, for those who don't know, time's recording. I had just recently moved to my new place out here in Chigasaki, Kanagawa, Japan. So this is like very Southern Kanagawa. So very South of Tokyo and Love the area, love this place, love the people here. And yeah, I don't plan on moving anytime soon. And even when I do, it's still gonna be within this area, just gonna be in my own apartment. So question number three, how much did it cost to get to and from school studying abroad in Tokyo? Now, uh, when I was actually physically going to class, it only cost me probably about 400 yen to go there and back back when I was living in Tokyo. And just because I was very close to the school, train line was very brief. <laughs> so uh, the cost was much lower. But when I moved out to Kawasaki and the school changed to Eastern Tokyo, uh, the cost did go up quite a bit. So when I would have to physically go to class, it would be well over a thousand yen one way. So it's 2000 yen there and back just to go to class, but thankfully I didn't have to do it every day. Um, I did most of my stuff online just to save costs. So yeah, <laughs> it just depends on where you are in relation to the school. And so question number four, how did I get around while studying abroad in Tokyo? Well, as I said earlier, it was by train. So I got from my place in Tokyo to my school in Tokyo in like 30 minutes by train. Then when I moved to Kawasaki, when I would actually physically go to class, um, it would be by train. But uh, like I said, most of my time in school was online, so I didn't really have to travel all that much uh, during my time in school. I could just stay at home, do my classwork, and uh, do other things from home. So I saved a lot of money, actually, on train fare. So question number five. How long can I study abroad in Tokyo? And Honestly, that all depends on the program that you're going under. Uh, so a lot of schools have a study abroad program where you can study there for, you know, three months, six months, up to a year. Whereas in my case, I was actually going to a satellite campus of a school that was based in America. So I could go there the entire time, which is exactly what I did and got my whole education pretty much there in Japan on campus or in the Zoom room, actually, for the most part. And yeah, it just depends on your situation, your program, stuff like that. But you could study there for a few months, up to a year for other schools, or you could do what I did and just apply to a satellite campus in Japan and do your entire education out there. Just depends on what you want to do. And so question number six. How do you do laundry in Japan if you have sensitive skin? Now this one might be a bit of a niche topic, but uh, for those who don't know, I have a very sensitive skin, so I can't use 
a standard detergents and stuff because I start breaking out in hives and things like that. So I had to be a little careful about what I use for laundry. And that was actually one of the worries when I moved back to Japan because uh, when I was stationed in Yokosuka, I would just get my laundry stuff on base. So it'd be no different than if I was in America. But uh, since I didn't have base access anymore, I was a little worried about my uh, sensitive skin options. But thankfully, Japan also has uh, sensitive skin laundry detergent. And this is probably one of the main ones you'll see. It's called Sarusa. Uh, they have a couple others as well, but this is the one that I use. And this is the character you have to look out for if you're looking to get laundry that deals with sensitive skin. So right here. And that just basically means no uh, dyes or perfumes or anything that is used in this. So that's what you gotta look out for if you have sensitive skin. So question number seven. How did you decide where in Japan to study abroad? Well, the fact of the matter is most of the schools where you study abroad at in Japan are based in Tokyo or at least the Tokyo area. So it wasn't really much of a decision for me to make. And plus I wanted to kind of be around the Tokyo area preferably in Kanagawa, which is close by to Tokyo. So yeah, it just made sense for me to find a school out in the Tokyo area. It just had many more options for me as an English speaker and things like that. So there are other options in other parts of Japan. I know plenty of people who've gone to school in Osaka, Kyoto, Hiroshima, hell even Nagoya, I've heard students go out to school out there so you just have to look around see what areas you want to live in want to explore and you know try to find a school that fits your needs so question number eight what are the qualifications for studying abroad in tokyo now again this varies depending on the school and the program but generally speaking you have to have a halfway decent gpa so probably bare minimum like a 2.5 but I would aim for a 3.0 or above just to be on the uh, the Dean's good side if you will and just to remove any possibility of you getting denied at least due to your grades and also depending on the school you're going to the curriculum you might need a certain level of Japanese if you're going to English school you don't really have to worry about that like in my case since I was going to an American satellite campus, I didn't have to worry about any Japanese ability at all. Uh, but if you're going to study abroad at a Japanese university, that is something they require. And that's typically, if you're taking the JLPT, that's typically like an N2, N1 type level. So if you have those skills, then that opens up a lot more doors to studying abroad in Japan. But if you don't have those skills, there are still plenty of options out there for you as well to study abroad out here in Japan. So question number nine, how safe did you feel in Tokyo? Actually, for the most part, I felt very safe in Tokyo and just Japan in general. You know, I didn't feel like I had to worry about my stuff getting stolen or me getting jumped in the streets or anything like that. Although there are a few areas in Tokyo you had to be cognizant about and just uh, keep your wits about you basically. And that's a lot of a little nightlife districts and things like that. So as long as you can keep your wits about you in those areas, you'll be fine. And the last question, the perfect 10. Was there anything unique specifically about your time studying abroad in Tokyo? And I know this might be a bit of a cop out answer, but considering the time that I was studying abroad in Tokyo, I have to say old Koloni Macaroni, old Kuronsuke, as the Japanese may say. And that's really affected my time studying abroad in Japan because I thought that I would get out and socialize and visit more parts of Japan now that I had uh, more time freedom to do so than when I was in the Navy stationed in Yokosuka where I could pretty much only do stuff on weekends or whatever. But obviously when that happened, <laughs> I couldn't really um, go out and do stuff because a lot of stuff was closed or heavily restricted and it just generally just didn't seem like a good idea to be going out gallivanting around Japan during that time but now that things are opened up it's pretty much how it was in the before times I'm definitely thinking about doing more exploring of Japan in the future as time and 
money allows. So be on the lookout for different types of anti japan videos going to different parts of Japan, not just in the Tokyo, Kanagawa area. So be on the lookout for that coming, I don't know about soon, but coming. coming. So yeah, those were 10 questions about my life as a study abroad student in Tokyo, Japan. And if you guys have any questions about life in Japan, studying abroad in Japan, just Japan in general, whatever you guys have, be sure to leave them down in the comments down below in the boobity boops and your questions could be in the next video. So with that said, this is Andy. Sign up for now. As always, forever. We'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.